Wait, Wait. that whole week was $25? Dude, you are a miracle worker. Hi guys, welcome back. Back by popular demand, we have Budget Eats. $25, five meals for two people. And I read all of your comments, yes, all of them, and you guys wanna see meat. So I'm gonna try to give you some meat this week. Do you wanna have any say in terms of what you eat this week? Anything you make is excellent, dude, so I'm happy. Anything I make is excellent, he says. Lies. I went shopping at three different stores around me because one, it was a beautiful day outside, and two, you guys said you wanted meat. So I had to go find affordable meat because meat is not cheap, y'all. We got some chicken legs for $2.78. We got some eggs for $1.67. We got onions for $0.99. Cents, ginger for $0.29. Cents, one small bag of all-purpose flour for $1.99. Brown rice for $2.99. Cucumbers for $1.99. You guys complained about me not having enough vegetables, so I really tried my best to get more vegetables this time around, guys. See? I'm listening. I'm listening. Scallions for flavor, I just gotta have them for a dollar. Garlic, a whole sleeve for $1.49. Red cabbage, a little bit heavier than I expected it to be. It was 79 cents a pound and this head came to $1.94. I got some lotus, I got some random peppers, and I got some string beans. I got a nice handful of fingerling potatoes for 56 cents. I got some bulk carrots for $1.22. I got a bag of stock bones for a dollar. I'm planning to use this for making some soup. Maybe we'll make some noodles out of our flour. I got a can of coconut milk for 99 cents. And I got a small handful of peanuts for $1.03. And all of that brings us to a grand total of $24.93. I'm pretty good at this now, guys. Right? Hubris. It will be the death of me. Because I bought several of my veggies from the discount aisle, I don't quite know how long they're gonna hold, so we'll take a look at their condition. We'll process them as soon as possible. Good as new, right? I guess so. So three lotuses came to a bag and I'm only showing you the two best looking ones. The third one is not doing so great. When it starts to mold or get gummy at one end, I like to take care of it right away. Chop off the infected parts, sterilize it a little bit with you know vinegar solution water, and then keep it tightly wrapped in paper towels until I'm ready to cook, and I should probably cook it first thing. Just peel it all the way around until you see pure white. Should be all creamy all around. When it's properly cleaned, it should look like this. 脏的似的，但是它不是霉，它不是完全黑，就是有一点点脏。Hi, are you there? 如果洗不掉, okay, okay, 好的, okay, thanks, mom. Okay, take care. Okay, bye. So I found a measuring spoon that goes in here perfectly and I can scrape around the dark spots. And now it's perfectly clean. I'm so smart. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking for the lotus. I have chicken, I have lotus. So what I think I'm gonna do is stir fry a sweet and sour lotus root with the two that look beautiful. And then the other one that doesn't look so beautiful, I'm gonna grate and or mince it together with chopped up chicken and make some chicken meatballs. And then we serve that over steamed brown rice. I think this might work. Two stages of cooking for our lotus root. So for the sweet, spicy, sour lotus root, we're going to slice, drop it in some salted water and let it go and blanch for about five, six minutes until it's half tender. Drain, pat dry, toss it in some cornstarch, salt and pepper, and we're gonna see if we can render the fat out of this chicken fat that we just got. Maybe this can work instead of oil. Who knows? Into that oil, we're going to sear our lotus roots until they're nice and slightly golden, a little bit crispy. And then we're gonna go in with some garlic, ginger. We're gonna go in with soy sauce, rice wine vinegar, brown sugar, 
a little bit of water if that syrup is getting too sticky too fast. And of course, we're gonna go ahead and steam some rice. And by steam, I mean boil. So I'm going to take the skin off the chicken thigh leg because I have plans for this skin. Then I'm gonna take it away from the bone and mince the meat up. I'm gonna combine the meat with my chopped up lotus roots, a little bit garlic, a little bit ginger, a little bit of, you know, some of those chopped up green peppers. They're a little bit spicy. Salt, a little bit of pepper, and a little bit of soy as well as a tiny splash of vinegar. Plus one egg. I'm gonna add just a little bit of flour so that it holds together. And then once it's all mixed, we can fridge it. A little bit of oil. balls do you want? Uh, two Just two? Yeah. I'm gonna give you three. Does this remind anyone else of like the scream? <laughs> that took way longer than I expected it to, but we did cook three things for dinner. So let's have a look, shall we? All right, we got crispy chicken lotus meatballs and we got some sweet, sour, spicy lotus. And we got some brown rice. How's the rice cooked? Let's go one by one. Is this just regular brown rice? Just regular jasmine brown. It's usually a bit boring for me. Boring, okay. Try the lotus. Well cooked though. It's good? Yeah, I could do spicy. Significantly spicier. Spicier? But very well cooked. I like it. It's crunchy. Mm -hmm. Meatballs. What kind of meatball is it? Let me see if you can tell me what kind of meatball this is. Looks like chicken. It's very light. It is chicken, isn't it? What else is in there? This one's a bit tingly. Is there like a Sichuan so popcorn in here or something? Mm -mm. Meatball's my favorite for sure. Really good. This is an eight out of 10. This is a solid dinner. Eight out of 10, it just, guys. It just needs chili covering every single thing. That's pretty good. Eight out of 10. Now it's perfect. Chili oil? Yeah. Okay. That's all any, any meal needs. So Aaron gave this an eight out of 10, and I think I might have to agree with him. Day two, I'm gonna debone and de-skin all of my remaining chicken, and then I'm gonna make some chicken stock out of those bones. Maybe I'll just make all the dough all at once and see if we can make a multi-purpose dough. We'll see. It's also just a really good looking knife, you know? So to make our broth, we're just going to de-skin, de-bone the chickens. We're going to take all the bones and all the little fatty chunks that aren't the skin and throw in a pot of water. Maybe I'll throw in some onion and then also sliced ginger. Doesn't really matter as long as you get that chicken essence out of it. We'll drain it and then we'll save the liquid for our curry. I'm also thinking while I have the kitchen hot and boiling with one pot of water, why not go ahead and boil it with two pots of water and make some bone broth? And this is how much chicken we have left to work with for the rest of the week. So for the bone broth, I'm just going to bring the bones up to a simmer in the water and drain out the water really fast, reboil it with new water. This gets rid of any gunky taste that the bones might have come with. Depending on the quality of your bones, they might not always be fresh. If our bones are as rich as I'm hoping they are, I'm hoping there's gonna be a thick layer of fat that's going to float to the top. We can fridge that broth and we'll skim off the fat and use it for cooking. That is flavor, baby. While our stocks are simmering, we're gonna heat up some water and let's get started on the dough. 787, and I'll keep some for working the surface later. 787 times 0.58, 
is 456 grams of water divided by three, 152 grams of boiling water. Give that a mix first to evenly distribute the boiling water. And then we'll go in with our room temperature water, about 304 grams. At this point, we'll add in some sugar and some salt just to flavor it up a bit. Once you get it into a nice ball, it might still look a little bit rough, but we can just let it sit, cover it, come back in about 15 minutes. After the gluten's rested, it'll be way easier to work. I've also decided since my kitchen is already positively steaming, we're gonna fry up the peanuts and we're gonna fry some garlic chips and we're gonna save that oil for deliciousness later. I'm gonna go in with some oil. And we're just gonna fry it until they turn lightly golden and we'll transfer them right out. And then to that hot peanutty oil, we're gonna add some garlic. I know a lot of you are like, hey man, peeling garlic, slicing garlic, frying garlic, that seems like a lot of work. I don't have time for that. To that I say, that's fine. I'm so sorry you don't have time for that, but this is gonna be so delicious. While our garlic is slowly basting in the peanutty oil, we're gonna return to our dough. It's much more pliable, much more soft, and I can feel there's more elasticity in the dough now. Drop in a little bit of oil, and we're gonna cover, and we're gonna let this rest for an hour at room temp for the gluten to develop on its own. That is the color we're looking for. If you guys like spicy oil, now's your chance. Drop into the hot oil some crushed red chili peppers, and give it a stir. Let it sit until the oil is red. Now you have chili oil. This was a fail. These were meant to be garlic chips, but they're just comfy garlic, which is absolutely delicious. They're like garlic gummies. We'll find a use for them. We're gonna move on to the curry now. A bit of our chicken from earlier that we diced. Sugar, our curry powder, some soy, and then I'm gonna grate some ginger and garlic in. You want all the grated ginger and all the grated garlic to just mingle. I'm going to put in some chicken fat. I'm going to toast up some aromatics, carrots, potatoes. Then we'll go in with some peppers, those mildly spicy peppers. And then we'll go in with our chicken. Smells amazing. Then we're gonna go in with some chicken stock and we're just gonna let it cook, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and portion this into roughly thirds. And I'm going to transfer two of these to a container. So I added two tablespoons more water to make the dough a little bit more pliable, but then I ended up ruining the gluten formation and now I'm just beating it back into shape and I'm starting to wonder if this is worth it. Probably not, guys. Dough's getting a little more taut. It's getting a little smoother. I can feel it holding more shape. That's the only thing you can do, guys. Just keep going. I think we're there, guys. Dough is getting smooth. This is just a lesson in how not to cheat yourself by taking shortcuts. Make sure the dough is actually smooth before you start resting it. Dough's a little sticky, so I'm just gonna dust my surface a little bit. Give it a nice fold, and then make sure we shape it into a tiny little ball and let them rest for another half hour to hour, whatever you can spare. Make sure you coat the top of the dough with a little more oil too. When I say I'm sweating, guys, I'm sweating. I think the lesson from this is don't bite off more than you can chew. Just maybe buy pre-made noodles or something. It's been about half an hour. That smells dang good. And it definitely needs more salt. Fish sauce is excellent because it adds that saltiness, but also adds a little bit of funk. And you know what else this needs? Our little confit garlic. Just maybe 
two spoonfuls of it. I'm also going to mix together one tablespoon of all-purpose flour with one more tablespoon of curry powder because I think we need to up the flavor and also give the soup a little bit more body. Snack time. Does anybody else really like eating this part of the chicken bone? Just me? Carlos, that's great for you. Milky white, that's exactly what you wanna see. The broth smells amazing. The meat is really tender. I think I can save some of this. <sighs> okay guys, the moment I've been waiting for all day is finally here. Let's make the roti and let's hope that it's not a complete show. We're gonna stretch it out as thin as it can go. We're going to brush it with oil all over, and then we'll laminate it. Bringing it in like this. Then we'll rest it. Next. I think for this next one, I'll do some chili oil for Aaron. He likes it spicy. And then on top of the chili oil, I think what we're gonna do put some of our garlic. Final one. Make sure your surface is well oiled, as is your dough. Then squish it flat and let it rest so that the gluten can relax. Here is our roti, and here is our curry. June, you are probably, and I don't think this is an exaggeration, the best cook in the history of the world. <laughs> is, this, is the camera rolling? The camera is rolling, Aaron. Oh, you have to take out the parts where I said that you do stupid things. Right, okay. <laughs> also where I... Zach, delete <laughs> all the footage, please. Here is our roti. Some layers. I bet if I uh, wasn't such a dingus, we could have gotten more layers in, but as is, not bad. Crispy, chewy, tender. Aaron, mm -hmm. I have spicy chili oil for you if you want. Oh, hell yeah. The flavor's great. I think if it had a few more layers instead of like four, it would yeah. basically be like Papa Rich. Here's our curry. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go for a piece of carrot. Mmm, it's a little spicy, yeah? It's sweeter than I expected also. Mm -hmm. Did you intend for it to be kind of sweet? A little bit. I don't usually add lots of carrots when cooking because I don't like uh, a lot of sweetness. If you're into that, it's excellent. You want to give me a grade after you take a few more bites? Seven out of ten now. Ten mm. out of ten if it was spicy. After all of my failures, too sweet. Seven out of ten. As it tends to happen in life when you try too hard. You almost never succeed. And today, today I try too hard. I'm gonna give myself a 7.5 out of 10. How about that? I think I deserve it. Day three. I cannot ignore those green beans any longer. They're looking a little worse for wear, so I think we have to cook them today. We have a lot of onions that we can use. We have some carrots. So a big bean stir fry. We're gonna learn from yesterday's experience and just keep it super simple today. Super simple soup noodle, super simple stir fry. So first thing, I'm going to trim off the ends and get away any bad spots that I see. My goodness, it's like the length of my arm. If it looks bruised and semi-transparent, it's probably not good. So yes, I did end up throwing a lot away, but we still have a lot to eat. We have a lot of beans, so we're using a lot of garlic. So 
So for the noodles, we're gonna take out a portion of the dough that we made yesterday. We're gonna roll it out thin, about maybe between half an inch, and we're gonna oil it all over so that it's not gonna dry out. Then we're gonna cover it with something, and then we're gonna heat up our broth. So we have our bone broth from yesterday, and you see this top opaque layer? That's all that goody fat that we're gonna use straight from the bone into our beans. Go in with some spices of your choice, a little bit of salt, All of your garlic. All of it. That's a lot of beans, dude. In the meantime, I'm gonna crush up some of our roasted peanuts just for the topping. I'm gonna put in a little bit of soy sauce. I think we're gonna need to hit it with some vinegar to get that nice acidity. 100% pure apples, guys. It looks really luscious, doesn't it? Anyway, I love this stuff. Let's taste. <laughs> Ooh, that's spicy. I know Aaron said he doesn't like sugar in his food, but I want some sugar in this. Here are our beans, and here's some peanuts. All right, let's get started on our soup broth. We're gonna use some of the chili oil that we made yesterday, about that much. So I'm gonna go in with some citron peppercorns. Aaron loves this stuff. I'm gonna go in with some homemade six spice. You can use five spice, you can use nothing or whatever you want. Some ground up green citron peppercorn for double the citron peppercorn action. And then a little bit of white pepper, just a touch. And then I'm gonna let this toast for about 10 seconds. And then I'm gonna go in with scallion and some sliced ginger. And then just when I'm starting to smell it, I'll go in with about four cups of broth. We're gonna chop it up into pieces and we're gonna hopefully bounce it out until we get our desired noodle thickness. Drop it in some boiling water, cook it until it's just al dente, maybe two to three minutes. Ugly noodles are probably gonna be for me. Then we're going to drain it, shock it in ice cold water. Not gonna lie, this is a pretty ugly noodle, but it's pretty bouncy. Is this a noodle? Question of the decade. So something I did learn, cut your noodles a little bit thicker so that they have more leeway when you stretch them. I hope you like thick noodles. I sure do. <laughs> These know, are like very thick noodles. As long noodles. as they're chewy, I'm happy. I hope they are, man. I hope they are. Here's our bowl of noodles, naked. Not too shabby, I guess. That one is for me. This one is for Aaron. Hi. Hi. So I made some soup noodles. That bowl is for you right there. <coughs> A little pepper. Uh huh. Just like that. That's very rich, yeah. Mmm. <coughs> nice chewy noodles. What do you think of the broth? It looks like it'd be pretty light, but it's actually quite rich. I actually like the beans. Shockingly, even more than the ramen. What? You know what this soup reminds me of? Mm -hmm. Fayo. Mm. Do you guys know about Fayo? It is my absolute favorite restaurant in New York City. So the noodles are quite bouncy. If you cook them for two minutes, they'll be very al dente. If you cook them for three minutes, they'll be quite soft, but very nice and pillowy. The broth, I'm very surprised by. I mean, it is bone broth, so it's amazingly flavorful already. But with all the aromatics, with all the spices, it's amazing. I love this. I mean, I thought it was gonna be quite plain, but I really like it. I murdered my ramen with chili oil. Murdered it. Yeah. For homemade ramen, this is a solid eight and a half out of 10. Really, the noodles are not lookers. They are not They're lookers. Very homemade, but they taste great. A nine for the beans. 
Nine for the beans. So does that mean I get an average of 8.75? If that's the math, yeah. Is that a winner so far? Don't try so hard. You'll exceed your own expectations. Truly, honestly, some of the ugliest noodles I've ever seen in my life. I think I'm gonna give myself like an 8.2. And with that, meal three is done. Day four, let's make some dumplings. So we still have some fingerling potatoes left. I think I'll wash those, boil those, mash those, then mince our leftover chicken bits. So for our filling, I'm thinking carrots, garlic, ginger, green onions, our mashed potatoes, chicken. Mash it all together into a filling paste of some sort. I'm gonna use some six spice, green citron peppercorn, some white pepper, maybe some MSG. A little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of sesame oil. So a lot of Chinese recipes include this instruction to only stir the meat when making fillings for buns and dumplings in one direction around the bowl. I'm not sure what this does. I have a theory that it involves feeding the proteins into the meat in such a formation that it clumps together into a cohesive filling, but I don't actually know. It looks pretty cohesive. I'm gonna chill it while we roll out the dough. We roll out our multi-purpose dough into a log, chop it up into little pieces, roll it out into little wrappers, and wrap our filling into the wrappers. The goal is to get the edges thinner than the center so that the center holds while the edges aren't too doughy when you crimp them together. Plop about a tablespoon or so of filling in the center, bottom to top in the middle, and start braiding it in. But I think my dough is actually a little too soft. Too much moisture content in here. Make sure you're pinching the top to seal it completely. Pinch, pinch. Huh? Aaron says he doesn't know how many he wants to eat, but he does know that he wants pot stickers. So we're gonna pan fry them, and I think we're gonna pan fry them in our chicken fat. I'm going to make sure our heat is no higher than medium, because we're gonna be searing and steaming these. Then I'm gonna start arranging our dumplings in a circular pattern. If your dumplings can slide around on the skillet like this, Without a struggle, that means it's probably getting quite nicely golden on the bottom. Then we'll hit it with some water and cover it right away. It's been six minutes. Nope, keep going. These are the most ginormous pot stickers I've ever seen in my life. Very plump, very doughy. All right, dipping sauce. One very small clove of garlic, a small dash of sugar, Chinese black vinegar, and a tiny drop of sesame oil. That's it. 20 minutes in, I'm pretty sure these are definitely cooked all the way through, so I'm just gonna wait until that bottom crust dries out. Maybe we'll make a cucumber salad to go with our dumpling because we have those cucumbers, we should use them very soon. And smashed cucumber salad is one of the easiest things to make and especially on a hot day like today, perfect for the summer. This is the texture you want to achieve. They should all be kind of craggly this way. They can hold on to spices way better. A dash of MSG, a pinch of salt, some of our chili oil, sesame oil, and some freshly grated garlic. Give it a tossy toss. Make sure everything's combined. Here is our smashed cucumber salad. Looks amazing. The salad, 9.5 out of 10. I always wanna eat this. Look at this. Perfectly smashed, perfectly spiced, perfectly seasoned, oiled. You know what those dumplings remind me of? What? Sufong's dumplings. Really? Yes. My mom's? They look like your mom's. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Look at how beautiful that crust is. 
Look at it. Look at it. My hands, my hands are burning. My hands are burning. My hands are burning. Here it is, guys. Our schmaltzy pot stickers. They look pretty dang glorious to me. That is a crust. That is a miracle. Now you said the filling was a surprise, right? Well, it's a surprise to you. It's not a surprise to me. I already taste a hint of Sichuan peppercorn. That was the first thing that hit my palate. Is that so? There is Sichuan peppercorn. Mm. I'm gonna try with the dipping sauce now. What do you think about the dipping sauce? Solid, standard Chinese dipping sauce. Yeah, I think that the dough is the best part of these dumplings, the crispy bottom and the chewy top. I'm glad you liked the dough because that was, that was the one thing I wasn't sure about. The cucumbers are a nine out of 10. Really great for Chinese cucumbers. I think the only thing I could improve them with is a little bit more acidity, a little more sourness. And the dumpling is seven and a half. <gasps> the shell is basically perfect. Crispy bottom, chewy dough, but uh, the filling is not my ideal kind of filling. I like pork. This girl cannot afford pork on 25 a week. Okay, well that's my brain. Once again, the thing that took less effort Oh, more delicious. I'm gonna give these an 8.5. Day four gets a nine out of 10 for me. What are we cooking tomorrow then? Day five. Let it be known that today was the day my dreams were dashed. See this? This is the chicken skin that I have been saving that I had great grand plans for. Well, it smells rotten. We make do with what we have, and what we have is this chicken mixture from yesterday. Before this rots, I'm going to shape these into tiny little meatballs and make a little meatball soup in our chicken broth. Then we'll probably use up the rest of that dough and make some scallion pancakes. And you know what? Lucky for me, on top of our chicken broth stock thingy is this layer of nice, gorgeous chicken fat. So I'm gonna skim this off and then we'll make another small batch of chili oil with this so that Aaron can dip his scallion pancakes into something spicy because he likes it spicy and we gotta give him spicy every meal. To make our chili oil, I'm gonna dump in our schmaltz, let it evaporate off all the liquid, and then have the oil reach up to a very hot point. A moment of clarity. And then we go in with our ginger. Garlic, dried chili, citron peppercorn, ground sesame seeds, and pinch of salt. Make sure you give it a good mix so that everything gets fried at the same time. Our schmaltz is kind of quiet, so we're gonna pull it and we're gonna splash it over our aromatics now. Aaron had also said yesterday that the dumpling filling wasn't quite flavorful enough, so I'm thinking to our mixture of ground chicken, we're gonna add a little bit of vinegar and we're going to add some MSG and then maybe some other spices to perk it up a little bit and then drop it in our broth. For our scallion pancake, we're gonna make a roux very simply. We're just going to heat up some oil. We're going to put in some spices and the equal amount of flour.
because you'll be eating it. Did you just call this a omelet? It's a scallion pancake, Aaron. This looks better than the roti that we attempted. I hope that's spicy enough for you. What's with the soup? There's meatballs in the soup. It's a throw everything in the pot kind of meal, right? Throw everything in the pot kind of meal. Ooh, that's spicy. Mm -hmm. That is way more spicy than I intended it to be. Ooh, a scallion pancake. I'm noticing a lot of layers here, first of all. Nice job, June. The soup, I'm gonna give myself a seven. It's like passing. It's got a little vegetable, it's got a little flavor. You know, it made me use up all of my chicken from yesterday, which, no waste. And yeah. it tastes okay. Six or six and a half for the soup. Six or six and a half for the soup for Aaron. And then scallion pancake? Like a nine. Yeah, nine. Scallion pancake gets a nine. Oh yeah. It is very flavorful. It's more spicy than I expected, just on its own. Very spicious. It's pretty tender on the inside, no? Yeah, it's great. I'm about to take a bite with that mm -hmm. schmaltzy oil. Ooh, that schmaltzy oil. Mm -hmm. Ooh. This might be the best chili oil I've ever made. Yeah, it's really, really good. And this soup is spicy. Everything's spicy. Scallion pancake gets a 9.2 from me. Soup is a 6.5. Spicy chili oil though, that's a 10. Is it too spicy for you? I mean, there's no such thing as too spicy for me. I'm just saying it's feeling. 6.5 plus 9.2 plus 10 is 25.7 divided by 3 is 8.56. Let's just round it up. This meal is an 8.6. Aaron just said my scallion pancake is legendary. Day 6. We are basically down to cabbage and eggs and scraps of everything else. I think it's time to make okonomiyaki. Okonomiyaki literally means what you want, how you want. There are different styles of okonomiyaki, but today I think I'm gonna go for the Osaka style. The Osaka style basically has one singular pancake. Coleslaw omelet. Then it gets covered in this delicious okonomiyaki sauce, which of course I don't have. So maybe we'll make an approximation of okonomiyaki sauce. It's like a sweeter barbecue-y type of brown glazy sauce. So okonomiyaki sauce, maybe ketchup, maybe some poison for that sweet and salty combo and that dark color. Fish sauce is kind of like the Asian Worcestershire. I'm gonna add just a little bit chili and adobo sauce. So I'm just gonna slice some of these babies up, salt, some of this delicious togarashi. so that it steams and cooks a little faster. I 
And then on top of that brown glazy okonomiyaki sauce, we have Japanese mayo, which thankfully I have in my fridge at all times. Usually it gets topped with a little bit of bonito flake. They kind of dance around with the heat from the pancakes. I also have that in my fridge, so maybe I'll toss some on and we won't count it towards the budget, you know? Because I can leave it out, but why would I? And then maybe we toss some forikake on top of that. Cabbage. There's potato in this, right? There is potato. Do you like it? I do. I really like it. It reminds me of Americanized okonomiyaki because the potato. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like Japanese American diner food. For okonomiyaki, homemade, your first try, eight and a half. I just love it all. It's nicely sweet from all of the cabbage and the starchy potatoes and the eggs. So eight and a half, mm -hmm. nine and a half for me. I'm gonna call it. There's like oil all over this lens, yikes. All right, welcome to day seven. We are running low on ingredients. I'm thinking we grind this up with our coconut milk. Add some spices and salt to it. And then we make some dosas out of it. So the thicker your batter is, the thicker your dosa will be. And the thinner your batter is, the crispier and thinner your dosa will be. This will thicken up over time, so we might dilute it with a little bit more water right before we cook it. Carbon steel cast iron pan. You can season them the same way. And I love using these pans. If you want any tips on how to season them and take care of them, Julia will hook you up. We'll have the link down in the description box for you below. As soon as you hear it pop in, it's ready to go. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of garlic, half of my onion, all of my peppers. We still have a lot of that pork meat left from our bone broth. I'm hoping it hasn't gone bad. Please hold. Still good. All of my meat bones, my garlic, my ginger, my onions. Once my onions and peppers are starting to caramelize, I'm gonna drop in my peanuts, let it mix together, and try not to die from the spicy fumes. Okay, once the onions are translucent, we're gonna go in with some brown sugar and some tamarind to paste. And a little more salt, some fish seeds. And we're just gonna cook it until it's nice, glazy, and caramelized. Not so much wet looking, a little bit more dry, on the edge of toasting bird looking. One never comes out, I guess. That's what I said, Jude. That is what you said. <laughs> Once I see the edges begin to curl up, I think it's ready to flip. Oh man. Aaron, we might not have dinner tonight. So usually it's ladled out into a circle and spread thin. But since I don't have a ladle, maybe an offset would work. Okay. Do you think it's ready to flip? Uh, hard to tell. All I know is it's looking pretty good. I have a fear of holes, and this is this is not doing it for me. I do not like this. Honestly, what my smiles look like nowadays. You ready for the weirdest dinner ever? For sure. This is our sweet and sour onion pork. It smells pretty divine. 
Mm. The meat is almost like half candied bacon now. That onion aroma is coming straight through because the pork has been bathing in it for 8,000 years while I've been trying to get these doses right. This gets a 10 out of 10. Maybe even like a 20 out of 10. Here is one of our doses. Really nice paper thin. That's not creepy at all, is it? No. This is really addictive, guys. That coconutiness, slight sweetness, slight spiciness from all the different kinds of togarashi and seasoning we put in here. 10 out of 10. Is it worth it? I don't know, but right now I'm enjoying it. How long have I been cooking? Has it been like eight years yet? It's definitely been since before I was awake today, so. Ooh, ooh, nice. I think this today might be your finest achievement yet of the week, Jim. What? Mm-hmm. Pro. This is definitely New York restaurant quality. Oh my god, guys. All three together as a meal. Uh, nine out of ten. <gasps> yeah. That's pretty high for Marin. Mm-hmm. I give myself a 10 out of 10. Day eight. I think this is the end of the road for us, guys. In terms of raw materials, here's what we have left. Tiny bit of peanuts. Brown rice cooked. A couple of scallions. Red cabbage. Seven eggs. Spicy chili oil. Some carrots. Our broth. A bag of brown rice. And one onion. And garlic. That's pretty much it. Not much else to it. So here's what I'm thinking. We make fried rice, obviously, but we put all of our garlic, onion, and maybe our peanuts into it. We reduce the stock. We make a little bit of like our okonomiyaki sauce, but with stock in it. And we make a knockoff omuraisu. I'm going to take these and make it into a slaw because who doesn't like slaw on a 95 degree summer day? We also have seven eggs. Aaron and I will be able to eat seven eggs over rice. Let's fry our rice with onions, a little bit of scallions, garlic, salt, pepper. And then we're gonna throw some ketchup in there because it's delicious. And a little bit of our reduced chicken stock. I'm waiting for the rice to just caramelize a little bit from that ketchup sugar content. So to make our sauce, I'm just going to put into this pot some of our leftover okonomiyaki sauce from yesterday. Omurice usually gets stuffed into a shapely mold of sorts. The rice bit gets flopped upside down onto a plate and it's a beautiful shape. I of course don't have that, so I'm just gonna put it in my bowl and flip it upside down, you know? So for our eggs, I'm going to beat five eggs with a little bit of reduced chicken stock that we had just to give it that extra runny factor. Hopefully, if I oil this pan up enough, there will be no stickage. You know what, all things considering, it could have gone way worse. Not a lot of color development on the egg. It still looks pretty nice and creamy on the inside. Eh. We'll drizzle our sauce over it, top it with some green onions, top it with some peanuts. A feast for two. Here it is, guys. Peanuts, eggs, ketchup, rice. Just all the good stuff. Oh, I love this. 
We're gonna share a plate. Because I don't want to do any more dishes. I'll try it as presented first. Wow, that's... How'd you get the eggs so, like, spongy? Do you like... It's not supposed to be spongy, dude. Uh, I like it. Do you like the flavor? I do. It's really savory. It's like, it almost tastes like ketchup, but it's not ketchup. But it is ketchup. But it is ketchup. <laughs> Today and yesterday were your greatest food days of Whoa. the week, Jim. What do you give this one? Uh, I give this one a nine again. Are you going to so, try it with the spicy chili oil? Yes. Mmm, chili oil. Mmm. How is that? Now it's a 10. Oh, mm -hmm. a Wow. I'm wow. taking this. Oh. Can't stop eating. Oh, okay. <laughs> I too give this one a 9.5. I think it's so nice. Sweet and savory, balanced by that kind of fluffy egg texture. That texture is dreamy. Simply dreamy. Would you agree? Is mm -hmm. it dreamy? I'm in dreamland. Hello, all guys. I forgot about the coleslaw. Let's try it. <laughs> I was so excited about the omurice. This is just some veggies. Yeah. I think it goes well with the omurice. It's veggies. It's not very exciting, but I think it's a perfect side, right? Mm-hmm. Coleslaw gets a 7 out of 10 for me. Coleslaw is coleslaw. It doesn't have to be exciting, guys. We are ending on a high streak, y'all. The only thing that I really didn't use is the rest of this bag of brown rice, but I'm sure we'll find a way to eat this up. So I think my favorite meals are definitely the dosas. That pork was delicious. I love sweet and savory, so I love the okonomiyaki, and I love this rice. How about you? Uh, today's and yesterday's are the big standouts, I think. Scallion pancake? Scallion pancake, the over rice, and the Cucumbers and the pork. All right, I was gonna try to pick a top three, but I have to pick a top four. All right. I guess that's it. That's it. What a great week. A week of splendor. Let me know if you guys liked how I spent my $25. And let me know what you want me to cook next time. Wait, oh. that whole week was $25? That's Actually, <laughs> if you don't count the half bag of rice, we only spent like 24. Dude, you are a miracle worker.